So like with all additions to carbon-carbon double bonds, the smaller chemical will break apart, half of it will go to one side of the double bond, half of it will go to the other. But you actually have to learn the mechanism for this. So electrophilic, well, something uh, loves electrons, that's going to be something positive, and addition, well, that's where you add two things together and just make one product, as opposed to substitution, where you'd swap one thing for another within the reactants. So where is this electrophile? Where is this positive species? Well, actually, this is the positive species here. This is a little bit positive. And this end is a little bit negative. Now that seems nonsensical. Bromine is bromine's non-polar. So how on earth does it now have this dipole? Well, this is called an induced dipole. Something is causing this bromine to have a charge separation. And what is causing that is the presence of four electrons here within the carbon-carbon double bond. The sigma and the pi bond there, four electrons, lots of electrons here. And the electrons in the bromine molecule are being pushed towards this bromine atom here by electrostatic repulsion. So using the curly arrows method, you can see that the bond here breaks and forms a bond with cut and forms a bond with the bromine there. And then this bromine-bromine bond breaks and the electrons move over to this bromine atom. And so you have to know the name of this asymmetrical bond splitting here. Uh, instead of the electrons, one going to the bromine and one going to the bromine there, both electrons in the bond have gone to this bromine. So that is a heterolytic event. So it's heterolytic Since the electrons are being split unevenly, effectively making this Br minus and that Br plus. Another word for splitting is fission. So this is heterolytic fission. So what have we got now? This is known as a carbocation. Cations are positive. Uh, you can think of plusy cat. That's how I remember that cations are positive. And now these two oppositely charged ions will attract and react. This is a Lewis base because there are a lone pair of electrons here that can react with this Lewis acid, which is deficient, a pair of electrons. So let's move those electrons in. In fact, I might even draw them. And using the curly arrow, we go on to make the final products. Now, in the animation, this bromine flipped up to the top there because these big bromine atoms uh, are more stable in the molecule if one's at the bottom and one's flipped up to the top. Uh, but that's probably beyond the scope of this video. That's to do with Newman projections. So this is 1, 2, dibromoethane. Note that you've got to give the numbers because the bromines could both be on the first carbon, 1, 1, dibromoethane. But that isn't what's formed in this addition reaction. You get the 1, 2, dibromo. So let's look at another example of electrophilic addition. Here's hydrogen bromide adding onto ethene. So again, this bond breaks, snap this in two and pop one on each side. But you do have to know the mechanism for higher level IB chemistry. And so in order to work out the mechanism, you need to know that hydrogen has a lower electronegativity than bromine, which means the electrons in this covalent bond are going to be more towards bromine with the higher electronegativity. So this end is going to be the electrophile. It comes in and is attracted to this double bond here between the carbons.
And so this now leaves a carbocation, which is an organic chemical with a positive charge on it. This carbon's positive. And this is the bromide ion. So the bromide ion is attracted by electrostatic attraction. And the second step in the mechanism, bromoethane. You don't need any numbers because it was that two bromoethane or is it one bromoethane? Well, it's always going to be the same. What about if the bromine's up here or there? Or if it's over here or over there? No, 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 it's all the same. It's all just bromoethane. No numbers required. Because there's only one sort of bromoethane. OK, let's reset with an interhalogen. An interhalogen is, well, in IB, it's diatomic with different halogens. In this case, iodine and bromine. So since you need to know the mechanism, which end is going to be attracted towards this negative part of the molecule here? Well, again, you have to look at the electronegativity. See which one has the lowest electronegativity. That's going to be attracted. So you've got iodine with 2.7 and bromine with electronegativity of 3. So bromine loves electrons more in the bond than iodine. So it's going to come along like this and just repeat the same old thing. And now we've got the bromide ion, which is left. And so this is acting like a Lewis base. It's a lone pair of electrons to be donated towards this carbocation, which is a Lewis acid. Now, how do you name this? Well, it's bromoiodoethane. Well, does it matter if you put the bromo before the iodo or switch them around? Yes, it does. It's got to be alphabetical. So B comes before I. What about the numbers? No, no numbers needed. So let's look at uh, something with three reactants here. Now, this isn't, doesn't seem to be in the IB syllabus, but it was in the Jeff Noose book, and you should trust the Jeff Noose book. All righty, so there's no way that this negative... Uh, particle here, the hydroxide ion, negative ion, is going to be attracted towards this negative area between those two carbon atoms. So same as usual, the bromine goes along, there's an induced dipole, this ends up a little bit positive, this ends up a little bit negative, and this bond will break and bond onto that bromine. So we have the carbocation, and we have these two negative ions here, the hydroxide ion and the bromide ion. Now, it just happens that the hydroxide ion is a better Lewis base than the bromide ion. Lone pair of electrons to be donated, and they react. This just goes off, does its own thing. So what would you call this? 2-bromo-1-ethanol and the bromide ion. And we're finished.